everyone, Tim Schofield here. It's time for my Huawei P30 Pro review, the latest phone from Huawei. Now, I hope you enjoyed that intro. I actually partnered with Epidemic Sound that has licenses for music that I can actually use in my video. So as you can hear in the background, I have some music going. I wanna start incorporating more of that into my video. So hopefully you enjoy it. If you like that intro, just drop a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, any feedback is actually welcome. Now, if you're interested in trying out Epidemic Sound, I will post a link in the description for a free trial if you want to kind of check out some of the music they have. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the review. Now, I was actually in Paris for the launch of the P30 Pro, so I've been using it for some time now, even uh, accidentally cracked it as well. So I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but let's go ahead and start talking about design of this phone. First things first, let's go ahead and talk about the color of this phone. Now, this is actually one of my favorite colors I've ever used on a phone. Huawei's design team over the past two, three years has done an incredible job coming up with some very unique colors that also look really great and also have a gradient depending on how the light actually hits the phone. Taking a close look, you'll see a very flat bottom where the SD card and expandable storage slot is. However, it's a proprietary Huawei card, so you'll need to buy one separate. It is not micro SD. One single firing speaker, which is kind of a bummer. I'm someone that likes to listen to audio out of my phone. Uh, so it is one directional and of course, just pretty average sound quality. It does get fairly loud. I just wish it was stereo. On the right side of the phone, you'll see the power and volume rockers. Power button has a little bit of orange to it, which I'm a big fan of. Again, shout out to their design team for just adding little things. There's also a bit of a texture difference. There's an indent here, which you can feel and kind of feel the difference between the two buttons. Now up towards the top, there is an IR blaster. So I do control my family room and bedroom TV with this phone. It actually comes in handy quite a bit. And this phone does have very minimal bezels. It does have a curved side, which some people like, some people don't. I do like how the content does spill off the display myself, but it does make for some more thin sides to the phone. Now up towards the top, you do have a notch that has not gone away in 2019. Very small notch, granted, but uh, there is one. The P30 Pro does have a glass back, which will accumulate a good amount of fingerprints like most glass backs do. I also wanna make note, this is a fairly slippery phone, so if you set this on maybe some sort of angled surface, it will probably slide off. So just kind of make note of that. If you set it on your couch with any sort of incline to it, it's definitely going to start sliding off of it. This phone does have an IP68 rating for water resistance and dust resistance, just in case any accident happens. And of course, with the glass back, you get wireless charging. But not only do you get wireless charging, you also get the reverse wireless charging right there. So you can go ahead and set other wireless charging devices on the back of it to share the charge. Now, if you look in the top corner of my phone, you will actually see a bit of a crack, and I'm honestly surprised how small it is. What ended up happening was my shorts had a hole in it, but not at the bottom of the pocket. It was actually the lining of the pocket itself that had a big gap in it, so when I put it in my pocket, it wasn't actually going into the pocket. It was just going straight down into the ground, and it landed on some tile. When I, when I heard it, it sounded like, I was like, oh man, that screen's cracked for sure, but luckily it wasn't. Pretty minor damage to it, which is very promising. Huawei also updated the in-display fingerprint scanner, which has seen a noticeable improvement from the Mate 20 Pro series. Uh, this has actually been the fastest fingerprint scanner I have used. It is optical, so it's a little bit different than ultrasonic. There are some benefits to ultrasonic. However, this has been the fastest in display fingerprint scanner I've used. And also I easily get used to putting my finger in the same spot after using this phone for a while, just can do it just about every single time. In terms of the display, you have a 6.5 inch OLED 1080p display. So it doesn't quite push that 1440p display that other flagships will have. However, that will help you save a little bit of battery life, but we'll sacrifice some quality when watching those 1440p videos and any other content in 1440. Within display settings, you can actually change that screen resolution down to 720p, which will help you save even more battery life if you're interested. You can actually change the color mode and temperature to it uh, a good amount, switch between normal vivid or change it on your own. And also you can hide the notch. Oops, not that one. If you can actually via software, just hide that notch if it's not something you wanna see. And overall, this is a solid 1080p display. The one gripe I really have about it is the auto brightness. I wish it would get brighter in certain situations and then in bright daylight, I was kind of wishing that it got even more bright, but that's really about it. So I find that I was manually kind of pumping up the brightness occasionally, not all the time, but in certain situations I needed to. 
Moving on, let's go ahead and talk about one of the main features and one of the best features of the P-Series, and that is the rear quad camera. Now, one of the lenses in the quad system is actually a TOF depth sensing lens, but the other three, one's a telephoto for five times optical zoom, one is an ultra wide angle lens and a standard wide angle lens. Now the P-Series has been known for their picture taking. Huawei even shows it off with their branding and their partnership with Leica being horizontal as you would probably hold a phone to take a picture. I want to touch on real quick the 50 times zoom capabilities on this phone. And no, you are not going to get great quality pictures out of the 50 times zoom. It is digital zoom, but it's more of a concept and a proof that Huawei is actually trying to push the limit of what you can do with a smartphone camera. The fact that you can zoom in 50 times on a smartphone is crazy to me. Anyone I've shown has really been wowed by it. I was originally. And it's not to actually take usable pictures, but it's more of showing, hey, look at what we're trying to do with a camera. Even Five Titans optical zoom seems like a feat to me. Now, taking a look at the viewfinder of the photo, just snapping a quick picture, you'll see these buttons down here. Now, if you tap on it, it jumps quickly to five times zoom. I wish there was an in-between to jump to two X zoom, but if you tap it again, you get a 10 times hybrid zoom to actually zoom in, which uses digital and that optical lens, or of course, you have the ultra wide angle lens, which I would prefer to have over telephoto, but it's great having both because of course there's scenarios for both. You do have a ton of modes, including a pro mode. You can go to more where there is just a lot more, even an underwater mode, if you'd like to use that portrait and also the infamous night mode. Night mode on Huawei phones has been amazing. Just takes kind of a long exposure shot. You'll see it counts down, lets you know to keep it steady and you can get some really good shots with it. Aperture mode has actually been one of my favorite modes to use, especially over portrait, because it doesn't necessarily need to detect a face. It just detects an object, and you can kind of determine how blurry you want that background to be. Now, I've generally left it disabled, but it's nice you have a quick toggle to turn on the AI, so if you want to take a picture without it, you can, and then go ahead and turn it on, and if it detects a specific scene, it will go ahead and optimize your photo. Now with the sensor they have in this lens, low light pictures have been incredible, not just with night mode turned on, just with the standard photo that you take in lower lights. Now I'm gonna show some of the pictures I've taken lower light, good lighting scenarios, and overall, this has been my favorite overall versatile camera to use, whether it's a low light shot, whether it's a telephoto shot I need, whether it's an ultra wide angle lens, this provides every tool I pretty much need to take pictures out of any smartphone right now. Now with that being said, yes, there's gonna be some cases where another phone might take a better picture than this one. However, the amount of tools that you have with the different lens system on the back, along with of course how great this phone is in dark lighting makes it if one of the best, if not the best, cameras on a smartphone right now. In terms of performance on this phone, this has Huawei's own Kirin 980 processor. I don't wanna go crazy amount of detail into it because this phone has handled everything I throw at it. Again, with any sort of multitasking, anything I wanna do with this phone, the processor has held up over time. Usually they wait for the Mate series to unveil their new processors. You can expect that later this year. However, of course, Right now, the 980 still just holds up. Everything seems to fly. Of course, on the latest Android 9 Pi with their EMUI skin, I have gestures enabled. So for gestures, swipe up and pause. It will take you to your recent apps where you can quickly multitask if you'd like to. Also, of course, if you want to, you can go ahead and go into something. If you swipe from the right or left-hand corner, it will actually go back a screen. And then if you swipe up from the bottom right or bottom left-hand corner, it will activate that Google Assistant. So you have all of those capabilities, all with your gestures. As I had mentioned, actually, if I wanna go, go ahead and go into an app with a left swipe menu, I actually mentioned this in a previous video, but I wish you could turn off the left edge detection for the back because sometimes I wanna swipe over and you'll see it doesn't work every time where you have to hit a very specific spot to get to that menu. And as I mentioned, Huawei has used EMUI for their skin over Android, which has gotten better and better over time, but I think that is probably still the downside of this phone. There's still things about it that need to be improved. And I mentioned this in just about every review of any phone that has EMUI on it. You'll see on the lock screen, no notification icons up towards the top, no notification right here. However, when I unlock the phone, 
oh look, there's a Discord notification up at the top, which didn't show on my lock screen, so I wouldn't have known it was there. A little unfortunate that they don't have all of those notification icons up there, and if you log into your phone and go back to the lock screen, no notification shows up on it. So that is one thing I think they need to improve upon. Feel free to join my Discord, actually. I'll link to it down below. We have a good community there. And of course, with the EMUI shortcomings, there are some great additions that they've added to Android. Huawei Share is great, especially if you have a Huawei laptop as well. Screen recorder built in, but I also want to go into Smart Assistance and go into Shortcuts and Gestures because there's some really cool ones with your knuckles that you can actually use. You can double tap to wake the screen or pick up to wake the screen. Now, if I go ahead and just knock on the screen with a knuckle, just double tap, it will go ahead and take a screenshot for me, which is fantastic. If I go ahead and swipe the middle of the screen, it will go ahead and go into split screen mode for me. So there's some gestures that you can use with your knuckles and they work every time for me. Now, I just wanna go ahead and give some final thoughts on the P30 Pro. Now, there are some really good upsides, including the camera on the back, the battery life you do have. However, you sacrifice a little bit of screen quality to improve that battery life. EMUI can be pretty hit or miss at times. Like I said, it's much better than it used to be though. And like I said, just that single firing speaker, not the greatest and also missing a headphone jack. You have to use an adapter or of course USB-C headphones. Other than that though, this phone has been great. I've really enjoyed using it. Like I said, I've had a fantastic time taking pictures with this phone. It's been a lot of fun. I love to see how passionate Huawei actually is in terms of partnering with Leica and then developing just something new with their camera system. And they've done a great job with their low light pictures that you can take on this phone. So that's just about everything I wanna talk about. I hope you enjoyed the review video. A lot more videos coming soon. So please click that subscribe button if you'd like to. Give this video a thumbs up. And as always guys, thank you very much for watching.